Gauteng MEC for Infrastructure Development, Tasni Matara, has tested positive for COVID-19 in a, in a statement that was issued a short while ago. The Gauteng provincial government said the MEC had received her results today after testing on Wednesday. She'll be in isolation for 14 days. So this further serves to illustrate that South Africa's coronavirus infections are just not numbers. These are politicians, mothers, fathers, uncles, aunts, grandparents. And uh, a media colleague, and uh, as well as uh, the founder of uh, Champion of South Africa, Ashraf Agada, announced a few days ago he too tested positive for the virus. Ashraf uh, joins me now via Skype. A very good evening to you, Ashraf. Great to see you. Thanks indeed for joining us. How are you feeling? I I'm going to say I'm well. Thank, mm. thank goodness for that, right? Um, and, uh, and that speaks of obvious concerns um, around what, what COVID-19 could mean for myself and my family. But at this point in time, I'm, I'm in reasonably good shape, yeah. I mean, uh, did you pick up any symptoms before your test uh, conf confirmed your positive result? And when was this? So first symptom was, was a slight croak, which, you know, you and I in, in the media business, we're sensitive to that, right? Uh, but nothing more than that. The second day, a bit more croaky. Nothing, uh, nothing too much. But on Tuesday night, when I went to bed, I had shivers um, and thought I had a flu. But, but my wife said, no, I don't have a fever. But by Wednesday morning at 5 a.m., I had an extremely high fever. And that suggested something was wrong. I went for a test on uh, Wednesday uh, morning around 11 o'clock uh, at Bits University. The test is conducted by uh, the Gift of the Givers and, and, the, and Mullah Labs. Um, through the IMA, the Islamic Medical Association as well. And, and they were able to deliver results to me like in about seven or eight, 10 hours. Uh, and about six o'clock that night, I got told that um, I'm positive. And you're also asthmatic, uh, Ashraf. I saw in a tweet of yours. I mean, that must also be uh, of concern to you at this stage. Yeah, I think, I think, you know, amongst the big concerns for all of us is like, what's your general health? What's your age? Now, if you're about 50 like myself, then there's always that concern. You're not 65, you're not 70, but you're concerned. Uh, asthma is, is, is a big problem for me because COVID-19 being a respiratory issue is, is a genuine concern. Um, and the other issue would be the issue of, of weight, right? Now, now, thank goodness, I have to tell you now, with hindsight, I, I, I went to, underwent a herbal life weight loss uh, a few months ago. And, and in the last six months, I've lost about 15 to 18 kilograms, which meant that the issue of me being obese was, was not going to be ticked off. So thank goodness for that. So I felt in reasonably better shape than I felt for a long, long time. And maybe at this point in time, I don't know what's going to happen over the next few days or weeks. I feel in better shape coping with COVID-19 than I felt before. Uh, Ashraf, how's your family? Uh, obviously, you're isolating, uh, I would presume, at home. And how's everyone coping? My, my wife is... Um, she has all the symptoms of, of COVID-19, just like myself. She hasn't tested, but, but de facto, there's a sense that if you are literally living in the same bed, then there's a very good chance that you are, are positive. Uh, she may well do a test soon, but we, we are uh, medicating her as if she is positive. She has headaches that I don't have. She has a bit of a fever that I don't have. Um, and, and her taste buds appear to have gone that I have, and many others apparently have lost their taste buds. But overall, uh, she's fine and I am fine. Now, I think the, the big concern for all of us, Chriselle, and I think for many people watching, is there are degrees of this, of this illness. For some people, it's a mild flu. For some others, it's a slightly more than mild flu. For many others, it's, it's severe, then it's critical, then it's fatal. The question is, none of us really knows at this point in time how it will impact on us until we get to it. You know, uh, one of the things I admire, and I've been watching uh, uh, when you announced uh, uh, that you tested positive for COVID-19, Ashraf, is the spirit at which uh, you've managed, uh, you know, to, to take all of this in. Uh, you've, you've gone as far as starting a group on social media for South Africans to post about their stories. Tell us why you did that. Uh, because there also seems to be, you know, a stigma, which is a massive problem. And I saw another tweet of yours where you said it was important for you and others others of certain influence within society to share their journeys? Yes, I, I think, you know, for, 
I mean, there's two theories. One is the pure conspiracy, like this thing doesn't exist. Now, I don't even think I need to waste my time talking to people about it. We know people have died. We know people have been critical. We know it's happened. The numbers are massive, 10 million around the world, 100 and whatever, 50, 70, 80,000 in South Africa, heading to 200,000 people. In fact, that's a reality, right? But for some reason, it appears like this is a stigma of like that you should may hush hush about. The reality is it's a very public disease that has overwhelmed the entire world. And the quicker we talk about it, the quicker we get support. I've been inundated, I can tell you, Christelda, with the incredible level of support from South Africans across the social and political spectrum. Uh, and that tells you, you know, that Ubuntu sense of I am because you are. It, it comes to the fore when we are willing to share our problems. Now, I do have a sense that for many people, when, when the president talks and, and ministers, William Kieser talks and he talks numbers, it, they don't always connect with that, but they connect with the real life experience of human beings like me and you. So when it's people like myself or, or, or Heidi Jokis, uh, who's also a, a media colleague, as we know, and I just heard you mention about uh, the, the MEC for, for Kauteng, uh, Tasni Montara, confirming that, that she's now positive and, and many others. I think people see the public face, so I think it's important that we, we share that with them. So, yeah, I just started this hashtag uh, South Africans with COVID, which I think is meant really to give people a human face to COVID-19, whether you've survived it or whether you're ill or whether you're just even watching from like a family member. I think away from the stats, we need to understand the human element of South Africans with COVID. Who, am I, who are they? They're me, they're yourself, they're your family, they're your cousins looking out. They are people doing shopping for you. Everyone is impacted. And it's about time we understand that. Difficulty, Ashraf, you know, I fully agree with you when you say, uh, you know, these are real people. These are not just numbers, but you're brave enough as, uh, you know, very um, uh, influential uh, in South Africa as a, a media practitioner. Uh, but there are many due to the stigma that you just spoke about, who are not willing to speak to the media about some of these experiences. And we can certainly understand why. The media, too, has been criticised for not putting a face to this. But it's very difficult to speak uh, to some who uh, do not want to be identified because of the stigma. What would you say, as that influential South African, uh, you know, to those who stigmatise uh, COVID-19, which adds to the element of people not wanting to speak out? You're brave, but others are not. Well, well, well here's the point. If you are, are, are a COVID positive and you're concerned about uh, being identified as one, my question to you then watching me is like, so what have you done wrong? Honestly, what have you done wrong? You've done nothing wrong. You're, you're part of, you're a victim of, of, of a pandemic that has affected the entire world. The more important thing by speaking out, you are telling people that ordinary people are affected by this. These are my vulnerabilities. These are my hopes. These are my fears. This is how I'm coping. This is the help I need. People, in fact, will respond to you even better when you, when you say, this is my position. On the other hand, people who don't have COVID-19, in fact, will be able to, to relate to your story and prepare better if and when it does get to them. And, and judging from the numbers, as we all know, it's not even a question of how, it's a question of when. I mean, I can tell this to you. That there's um, I, I am of the Muslim faith. So so one of the, the Quranic ayats is, um, in Arabic is, فَإِنَّ uh, ma'al usri yusra, inna ma'al usri yusra, which loosely translated says, surely after every difficulty comes relief. Surely after every difficulty comes relief. Now I'm suggesting whatever your faith is, when you connect to that, that after every difficulty and every test comes ease, you will buy into that philosophy. And that is then that difficulty that you would want to share instead of keeping quiet. Because I'll repeat this point, what have you done? Ashraf, uh, I really appreciate uh, you speaking to us this evening. Uh, uh, we, we really admire your positive spirit uh, and, uh, you know, uh, coming out to inspire others as you also, you know, battle uh, uh, this uh, uh, coronavirus. Uh, we're sending love to you and your family as well and certainly thank to you. our other media colleague, uh, Heidi Giacos, as well. Uh, thank you very much indeed uh, for speaking to us this evening. I'm sure many thank have heard... You. Uh, that call we really do appreciate it. and we do encourage of course and many others go ahead and, and i would say this much i mean 
I mean, reasonably good health at this point in time. Uh, am, I, am I scared? Are we concerned? Do we have fears? Uh, are we worried about loss of life? Absolutely. We have all the vulnerabilities in the world. That is why it's so important that we talk about it. Ashraf, thank you so, so much for speaking to us here on the program this evening. Thanks indeed. And uh, we wish you all the best uh, going forward. Please keep us updated. I know you will. And uh, we wish you and your family uh, certainly all the best. Thanks indeed. Founder of Champion South Africa, Ashraf Garda, speaking to us tonight uh, after a couple of days ago uh, announcing uh, that he had tested positive uh, for the coronavirus. Uh, all upbeat and uh, uh, giving us updates of how his progress uh, uh, continues uh, over the over the days. So thanks indeed.